Class is in session, and man, is it good to say that again. It's hitting the books here on Pub Sports Radio Season 3, and we're happy to be here. Ian Cameron and my right wing, my line mate, if you will, to use a hockey term. We've done shows on this channel now for years. We're back. It's Connor Mack, and yours truly back again for another season. C Mac, it's college football season. It's back, and it, that's a very good thing for all of us. It is. I'm such a, a big baseball guy. And, uh, but man, this summer, they always feel long. Maybe it's because we're back to normal sports, like schedule. You know, we've had these last couple of years with COVID. Um, so it just felt like a long, long summer. But I'm just glad, yeah, football is back. College football, third season hitting the books. I'm pumped, man. Week zero is not great, and I think there's some good games. I don't know how much of value here. I know you'll probably be firing off, <laughs> my guy. Shocker. But uh, I hope we, you know, we'll get through these seven games that we have and kind of tear them apart here and uh, see if we can get some winners. Absolutely. we got seven games for week zero coming up this Saturday, and we will break them all down for you right here, hitting the books. And we'll be here each and every Monday throughout the college football season, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time. I'm ready to break down some games. It's been a while since I've been able to talk a college football game. So let's get underway. We will start with uh, a trip across the pond to Dublin, Ireland, where it will be Navy taking on Notre Dame. And it will actually be the very first college football game to kick off the 2023 season, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. We've got Notre Dame, a 20-and-a-half point favorite here. Neutral field, although I'm sure the Notre Dame uh, faithful will turn out in droves uh, here in Ireland to support their team. Uh, they're 20-and-a-half point favorites, 50-and-a-half uh, being the total here in this game. Let's start with Navy. OK, because this is going to be a fascinating team to watch. It's going to be very weird to see a Navy team take the field to begin a season without Ken Miu Matalolo being on the sidelines. Fifteen seasons as a head coach there. And he was actually a coordinator with that program before that. Uh, and of course, we saw the disappointing season, the loss at the end of the year to Army. And then, of course, the very, very disrespectful uh, and abrupt firing of Ken Neu Matalolo late in the season. So uh, Navy now is uh, starting uh, over a little bit here from the uh, coaching uh, standpoint. And when you look at Navy here coming into the season, uh, it's going to be fascinating to see the transition. And you could probably see say this, Connor, about all these um, service academy teams where there is a change in the rules in college football this year. Cut blocking is being outlawed. And so for all of these teams like a Navy that have been running triple option offense for all these years, how is it going to impact them? And you are unfortunately now seeing Navy and Army and Air Force having to sort of revamp the way they run their offense because of this. And for Navy, uh, it looks like they are going to go to, it's still going to be a run heavy offense. Grant Chestnut takes over uh, as the offensive coordinator. They bring him in from Kennesaw State. Brian Newberry is the new head coach here uh, with Navy. Uh, and he is someone that's been uh, with the program for a while. But it looks like they're going to keep concepts of the triple option in this offense. It's going to be more shotgun here for Navy with this new offense. Yeah. But it is still going to be very run heavy. What's a very interesting quote here from the offensive coordinator, uh, Ch Grant Chestnut, is it's totally different, he says. New verbiage, and it's a totally new offensive system in a lot of ways. So, what does that tell me when I read that from an OC? It tells me there could be some growing pains here uh, early in the season, maybe for Navy's offense, even though they do bring back a very experienced quarterback in Ty Lavatai, who we remember last year was the starter for this team. Uh, he definitely has the experience, but again, you're seeing a little bit of a change here in the Navy offense uh, coming into this season. You know, the offensive line last year does return four or five starters. The O-line didn't have, you know, wasn't, great last year by any stretch of the imagination but certainly comes back with some more experience this year uh, and that's going to be probably a good thing here uh, for uh, Navy we know their issues last year were on defense big time uh, with this Navy team they're actually not bad Navy against the run um, yeah. but they were pretty bad uh, in the secondary and when you look at this matchup and you flip it over to Notre Dame and what's going to happen here with them is they bring in uh, and you talk about this could be actually one of the greatest 
biggest quarterback upgrades in college football this season. When you're talking about the Tyler Buckner and Drew Pine duo from last year, who just weren't any good, weren't consistent, making mistakes, throwing bad interceptions, killing drives with just horrible uh, accuracy problems at times. And now you go from those two to the Wake Forest transfer, Sam Hartman who comes in at quarterback this year for Notre Dame. It's going to be just a huge upgrade. He's got a big arm. Uh, he's certainly got some weapons. They're going to miss the big tight end, Mayer, uh, who is just an absolute beast for Notre Dame, but there's still plenty uh, of weapons to go around here for the Notre Dame offense. They also have a new uh, offensive coordinator this year, and it's funny because the new OC is a guy that worked under Neil Brown in West Virginia the last couple of years, and you know, is it a great hire? I'm not so sure, see, Matt, because West Virginia's offense was kind of up and down, you know, the last yeah. couple of years. The, but the thing that's working for Gerard Parker here, the new OC, Marcus Freeman hiring him in the offseason, was, you know, Sam Hartman's a very experienced and a very talented quarterback. Don't screw it up with the play calling. Let him do his thing. Let him play to his strengths. They'll be fine. I think the O-line is going to be excellent for Notre Dame. They've got probably one of the best left tackles in all of college football, Joe Alt. He's going to be a high-level NFL draft pick next season. That's going to be significant for them, no question about it. Uh, in fact, both tackle positions are extremely strong, uh, no doubt. Um, and the O-line is definitely an area of strength for this team. You know, the D-line, it's going to be interesting because they got to replace an All-American, Isaiah Foskey. There is some turnover along that defensive front coming into the uh, season. They've got a lot of options at linebacker. Uh, the secondary, you know, should be uh, fairly mm -hmm. sent, but – when you look at the uh, offense, I think there's definitely going to be a lot of uh, capability. Estime is back as the uh, running back uh, for this uh, Notre Dame team. Uh, they're definitely going to have some solid weapons to uh, work with in terms of the receiving game for Notre Dame coming into this year, including uh, Tobias Merriweather, who should be really, really potent for them in the passing attack. The one thing we see from Navy is they do not stop passing attacks. Very good quarterbacks. Very, uh, very yes. good passing games. Yes, yeah, the last two years. Play. Yeah, they just have yeah. never had a very good secondary going up against a good passing attack. So, I think Notre Dame can score a boatload of points here. It's going to be what will this new look revamp Navy offense, which cannot run triple option anymore. It's doing a shotgun run oriented offense this year because of the cup blocking being banned. You know how are they going to be able to gel this quickly? I did have a lean to the over here, and I still lean that way. It's 50, 50 and a half. Here's the concern, because I think Notre Dame is going to score at will. It's what are you going to get from Navy here? The weather is going to be a little iffy for Dublin on Saturday. We're looking at 70% chance of rain, although the wind won't be that bad. I do think there's an element to this game where Navy's offense, like it's sort of this big mystery, and maybe it's something that can take Notre Dame's defense kind of aback here, take them by surprise, because we have thoughts of what, the new look Navy offense could look like, but I don't think anybody is sold on what it actually will look like. And we've not seen it on tape. We've not seen it in a game situation yet. Maybe that's something that could really cause Notre Dame's problems, defense problems here, just because of lack of familiarity with what they're going to see. So I do have a lean to the over. I, 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 I it's a lot of points to lay, but I just don't know where Navy's going to stop Notre Dame. That being said, I don't want to lay this many with Notre Dame on a neutral field. I'd probably lean to a Notre Dame team total and a full game over at this point when it comes to this game. But again, check the weather. And keep in mind, last year's Navy-Notre Dame game was an extreme shootout, flew over the total, and Notre Dame didn't even have any quality quarterback play last year. And the Navy-Notre game last year still went over the total. So I do yeah. definitely uh, have the over circled. I'm waiting to see what this weather situation dictates here closer to kickoff c mac what are you thinking here for this opener navy notre dame shout out to the chat shout out to our guy arthur me jr becoming a, a member we appreciate appreciate you my guy always supporting us over the years shout out to arthur me let's hit the weather like you talked about i see rain kind of all day you know over there in ireland it kind of comes and goes and it's usually not too heavy so that will be uh, interesting. And I thought the total was set a little low. Totals for me, I love totals in college football, Havana. With the new rules, the cut block and the clock here, maybe I wait here uh, the first week or two just to see how it really plays out, if it's going to change much. Obviously, I still think some teams are just going to score. You know, obviously, this is college football uh, in that regard. Yeah, let's get to Navy. First year now with uh, Newberry. No more triple option. 
here. <laughs> I mean, they are going to use it, but they're going to throw it a lot more. That's the big question mark. You know, they ran it on Notre Dame well. And that game, I believe, was like the second to the last game of the year. They played late last year. Um, but that game was 35-16, and Navy scored 16 late in the fourth, and Notre Dame didn't have any. So kind of they were beating them down. I think they do that, you know, a little bit here. I always have trouble just to touch on Notre Dame as a three-touchdown favorite. You know, normally it's at home. This is kind of semi-home uh, over in Ireland for them in this one. So it's tough. You mentioned it. Navy gets lit up by, you know, some good teams. So whether it's like Houston or some of these better quarterbacks would light them up uh, in the past couple of years, the passing game. And we all know Hartman. I think he does that. And Notre Dame wasn't a team that had a ton of explosive plays, and they need to do that, and I think they get off to a good start. It's just if you want to lay the big points here. I, you mentioned it. The D-line I think is a little bit weak for Notre Dame, but the linebackers are all right. I like the secondary, you know, with Morrison, Cam Hart. I think the safeties with Brown and Watts are solid. Uh, I think they'll be pretty good. And you mentioned the weapons that will have Merriweather, uh, Tyree Thomas, I think they make some big plays. It's just what do we get from Navy? Can they score? You know, because I think this Notre Dame defense is pretty good. Uh, so it's tough for me. I, I really, I think I'm going to be off as much as I want to gobble these points. You know me, I want to take these points. Um, and we'll see. It's just kind of hung here at 20 and a half. You know, it's just like there. We'll see. Does it get over? Does it just stay here all week? That should be interesting. Yeah, I think definitely you're going to see the weather really play a part here. But, you know, one thing about Notre Dame, too, is you're definitely going to see, I think, with this group, more of a uh, a quarterback they have faith in. Uh, they're definitely going to air it out more. Again, the only thing that's really bothering me about pulling the trigger right now on this game going over the total is that weather forecast. We're going to wait till we see, you know, closer to Saturday because I don't think this total is going to move that much. It's basically this total opened, I think, in the high 40s. There was some initial move to the over. Like this was months ago. But for the last several weeks, it's really been staying pat in this 50, 50 and a half range. So I don't expect it to move a whole lot. So really it's just let's wait until closer to kickoff on Saturday, see how the weather's going to be uh, in Dublin for this game. 